Hello, my lovely listeners. I'm Dr. Mary Barson. And I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. Welcome to this episode of Real Health Health and and Weight Loss. Hello, lovely listeners. Dr. Mary here. And I am joined by my gorgeous colleague, Dr. Lucy. Dr. Lucy, tell me something interesting that's going on in your life this week. Oh, good morning, Mayors. Good morning. Well, a couple of things. So one of the things that I am managing my mind about is the fact that I've come back to Melbourne having been away for six glorious weeks in the sunshine and it's the middle of winter. And my brain is railing against this. It keeps wanting to be back. Uh, and our fa- one of our favourite places that we visited was called Rainbow Beach. What a beautiful name. So my husband and I are always going, oh, we just love rainbow. And he keeps sending me pictures of anything that's got anything to do with rainbows. So it might be a <laughs> towel that's, come, that's rainbow coloured. <laughs> pictures of like he he was in an ice cream shop and he sent me through a picture of a rainbow colored ice cream and so it is yes rainbow tops rainbow clothes my my currently our message chat is just full of rainbows so um so it's wonderful I have so many rainbows about me right now I just yep I like rainbows. yeah they're wonderful they're wonderful and so um it's interesting that you know we keep coming back to that what wonderful times we had. And so I guess it is that idea that reflecting on the past can be great, can be great clearly. You know, we've got nostalgia and we can review the past. Reflecting on the past if it's full of regret and remorse and hashing over things and wanting to change it is unhelpful. But there is some joy definitely on being able to look back and think, yeah, that was great. That was great. And sometimes I think you can look back on something with memories that are even fonder than when you were in it. Yeah. Oh, yes. One of the most beautiful things I think about being a human is that we own everything inside our head, like how we choose to make sense of reality We own it all. It's all ours. Absolutely. And (laughs) nobody else owns it. So, yes, absolutely, you can look on the past with with great fondness. And our our perception of memories can change over time as well. Memories are not, not these static things. And the wonderful thing about owning everything that is in your head is that you can learn to work with it and get everything inside your head to work for you rather than against you. Oh, absolutely. And do you know what I'm suddenly thinking of? It's that thing too. I'm sure lots of you beautiful listeners have had this experience where maybe like maybe your first boyfriend, for example, or girlfriend, and maybe the relationship, you know, it ended, presumably you're not married or, or still with your very first partner, but but you look back on it and your brain will filter out potentially the dud stuff, and you suddenly have this sort of curated version. Or the other way around. (laughs) Yes, it can go the other way around. You can filter out the good stuff and you just have a curated version of whatever you want it to be and that is now the the reality, which is not really the reality. And so it is. It is so interesting. And I know that we can do this with food. The memory of something is often, and who's had this experience, often so much better than the reality. You go, oh, so looking forward to that. And then I had it and I was like, oh, wasn't as good as I remembered. Absolutely. And it's we're in charge of, of what we assign meaning to. So we can assign meaning to food and alcohol, but that that doesn't mean that it that that is real that it's based in reality we can also change that as well ah oh, yes i love our brains i'm managing my brain about fractures i've probably fractured a bone in my foot and my daughter has fractured her finger and <laughs> coming up with my helpful useful <laughs> beliefs around that is my ongoing challenge i'd rather be thinking about rainbow beach to be honest yeah 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 <laughs> Maybe I'll just will. I've never been there, but I'm going to start thinking about it. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. (laughs) In fact, maybe I'm going to start a tourist campaign. (laughs) So um, one of the interesting things, again, coming just bringing it back to things like food and is our perception that food gives us energy. And 
I mean, at a very basic level, there's absolute truth in that. Like that that's what food is. You know, it's a whole heap of other things, but at a very basic level, it does. It gives us energy to do the things that our body and brain, and I mean, I don't know why we always separate out our brain like it's separate to our body. Our brain is just an organ, like the heart, like the liver, like the kidneys. An organ that uses most of our energy. Indeed, indeed. And um, very large amount of it, yes. For lots of people that, you know, when they're tired, they and their brain will go, I need energy. And so we, we we look for something to give us that energy. Yes, and I love your analogy here, Lucy. So very broadly speaking, our body can use two types of energy, two types of fuel to make energy. So no, I'm going to bring it back a little bit more. Every single one of our cells, well, almost every single one of our cells has got these fabulous little batteries inside them called mitochondria and mitochondria are these incredibly clever little organelles that make the energy that power everything that we need to do to be alive. They make the energy and mitochondria have the job of taking our fuel uh, from food, combining it with oxygen to make this energy. So we need to breathe and we also need to eat in order to get our energy. And our mitochondria are clever. They can use various types of fuel. The two main ones are sugar and fat. And Lucy, let's talk about sugar and fat and how they are, they do not create equal amounts of energy. Uh, they are not created equal. Can you please, drum roll, give us the woodshed analogy to break down energy? Indeed, indeed. So when we talk about sugar, we most people will think of sweet sugar, which is fine. That's exactly what sugar is. But there are various types of sugar and we just call them all carbohydrates. So carbohydrates include sweet sugar and they include your other starchy sugars like potatoes, like flour, so pasta, rice, grains, all of those things. And what these do, these are like kindling, if you will. They will give you quick. So when you're trying to light a fire, you don't just plonk a log on and try and create a fire, it's not going to work. You have to have some kindling. That kindling will be, you know, little thin bits of sticks and twigs and paper and things like that. And it sparks, it gives you a bit of energy, and it's great. And then what's supposed to happen is that once that gets going a little bit, you then put a log on to keep your fire running all day. And what's the log? The ah, So the log... The log in human terms is some fat. So preferably, but not necessarily, our body fat. It could also be the fat that we eat as well. It could be fat that we've stored or fat that we eat is our log. Yeah. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to be able to energise our body, i.e. heat our house with a little bit of kindling and then a log. And when we do that, that's how our bodies are supposed to run And that's what we will refer to as the fancy term of being metabolically flexible. But it is how humans are designed to run. And it makes sense. It's how fireplaces are designed to run. So what happens though is that, and if you imagine, just imagine you've got one of those kunaras that you've only got a certain amount of room. What's a kunara for those listening at home? a wood burning fire, one of those ones. So it's one of those fireplaces that has got like a, a box that you put the all the wood in and then you shut the door. <laughs> limited space. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Limited space. Thank you. That's what I was trying to say. So yeah. So you've even got a small amount of space. So if you fill up that space with lots of twigs and paper, you won't be able to fit a log in. So then your fireplace starts to burn down. And you run, literally run out of fuel. And so your brain goes, oh, my God, I need fuel. And so it fills it up again with 
twigs and paper. And in food terms, that is like, and we fill it up with something quick acting. So that'll be, as an example, and marketing, bloody marketing mischief, an energy drink. Or, and this is a bit sneakier, a latte. So a coffee with milk. Possibly also sugar. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason that milk in particular will also give you energy is milk is just, it's got a lot of sugar in it. It's got lactose, so we don't necessarily recognize it as sugar, but lactose breaks down to glucose and galactose, galactose breaks down to glucose. So it's just got glucose, which is sugar. So for lots of us, what we're doing is we're tired, run out of energy, we're busy, we've got no brain space, we're really not functioning efficiently. So we're looking for these kind of crutches to give us enough energy to survive the day. And these will be quick acting, you know, and I'm using air quotes for those who are listening at home, energy boosts. At a biochemical level, like what actually stops us from being able to burn fat like our logs for that beautiful long-lasting energy, it actually is sugar, so carbohydrates, your sweet stuff and your starchy stuff. That actually turns off our ability to burn our fat for fuel, those beautiful long-lasting logs that would give us quite a lot of energy. And it does this because elevated Eating extra carbs, sure, it crowds out your fireplace, so your body's going to burn that rather than burning the fat fuel logs. But it also increases your metabolic hormone insulin, which uh, blocks off your ability to burn your own fat stores, literally turns off our ability to break down fat. So not all energy is created equal. Not all fuel is created equal. Our bodies are much happier when we are able to burn fat for fuel, because not only is that a lovely slow burn with a beautiful constant supply of energy and you're not riding that sugar roller coaster of get a sugar hit, have some energy, crash, need another sugar hit, get some energy, crash, need another sugar hit, get some energy, crash. Like that is a terrible, horrible way to live your, throughout the day. You actually have a nice steady eat, you know, eat your breakfast, baby, don't even eat breakfast and you're not hungry again until lunchtime. And then you're not hungry again until dinner and you just have this beautiful, steady energy, lovely mental clarity, feeling quite fabulous. That's when you're burning fat. So not only does it make you know, sense that we feel better, we are literally far healthier when we burn fat for fuel. Going back to those gorgeous little mitochondria inside our cells that are making our energy, when they are burning fat, they are in many, many ways far healthier far more numerous, far more resilient when we're burning fat. The fancy term is called fatty acid oxidation because we use oxygen, we breathe oxygen and we burn fuel. It's called fatty acid oxidation. So when our fatty acid oxidation rates are nice and high, we are far healthier in myriad ways. We've got decreased risk of cancer, decreased risk of type 2 diabetes, we've got improved longevity, all of these fabulous things, as well as just having lovely energy and increased vitality. And the thing that turns off your ability to burn fat is sugar, which is why energy drinks are dumb. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I know. I know. And I mean, what a brilliant model though. If you're if you own an energy drink company, anything, anything that's got a lot of sugar in it and you market it to saying to people, this will give you energy. I mean, it's evil, but brilliant because yes, it does. It gives you energy in that moment, in that short term, and then it creates, you know, the downhill of the roller coaster. So then it turns off your fat burning. So you actually can't access your long stored energy. So now you're back to being tired again. And so you think, oh, God, I'll have another one. <laughs> okay, yes. I'll have another one. And so, you know, I just go, oh, you. That's all right. <laughs> and you can also get angry too, that that hangry, like you can actually get quite, it can be quite stressful when you don't have access to that energy stores and you've got that that sugar crash, that, you know, the the 
food industry likes to uh, market this as well, that I've got the hangries, I'm hungry, angry, I need food now. That's what's going to keep you in the sugar roller coaster and it ain't fun. But beautiful Lucy, it, what if you're just sitting on the couch right now or you're driving to work or you're dropping the kids off or you're at work and you're just like, oh, I'm just, I am sick and tired of being exhausted. So it's all very well, Dr. Lucy and Dr. Mary telling me that, you know, sugar is turning off my ability to burn fat and that if I stopped eating sugar, I could turn my body into a fat burning machine and have this beautiful energy. And wouldn't that be great? Well, that's, that's fantastic. Except right now I'm exhausted and I'm reaching for my energy drink. And the idea of just giving up sugar, giving up carbs is just exhausting. What would we say to these gorgeous people? So this is the super interesting thing about our beautiful brains. So our brain, we will only change what we're doing when the pain, again, more more air quotes, the pain of staying where we are is greater than the pain of moving. And if you think about anything, if you think about a giant rock, a boulder, some enormous thing, thing and you try to move it the first bit is always the hardest you know it's not until you get momentum does it become easy to move so our brains go oh my god there's no way I could do this there's no way I don't want to give up sugar I don't want to give up my car I don't want to do that latte I'm not giving up my latte (laughs) no lost (laughs) yeah absolutely and we always say you know what our brains want to make it hard It's weird. I mean, why would your brain want to do that? But they're complex. They are complex things. And it will look for the reasons why it's hard. And, you know, I think that probably lots of you have seen that amazing picture. It's a great graphic. And it's a picture where there's two ladders side by side. And one has a little person running up to the top of it. And it's got lots and lots of little rungs. And the other one has a ladder, same size ladder. Uh, but it's got much fewer rungs and, in fact, the person's still stuck at the bottom because they can't even reach the first rung. And part of the reason they can't reach the first rung is because their brain is saying to them, you can't do this, this is too hard, you can't. What sort of life are you going to have without sugar? What are you going to do when you go to the movies? What are you going to do when you go out with your friends? What are you going to do? You're not going to be able to do this. Don't. Oh, God, why would you do that? And it'll give you this scenario about how terrible it is. So our reckoning with this, and and we do this in all of our coaching, we love this concept. It is amazing called shrink the change. Because remembering our brain loves to magnify the hardships in our life. And, and look, and the reason is that why is it doing that? Because you go, what? Why would it do that? It, and, again, this is another thing we talk about and it's a conversation for another day, but it does it to keep us safe. So it says, yeah, don't. that's too hard. Don't bother with that, that if you try that and you'll fail, then, that, then you'll feel terrible and you'll be in some shame spiral. So don't do that because that's too hard. So we go, you know what, why don't we just stop that conversation and move into the shrink the change conversation? Yes, do something really, really doable. Take your goal and if your goal is to turn your beautiful body into a fat burner so that you've got more energy, so you've got more vitality and so that, yes, you can lose weight if you've got a weight loss goal as well, you want to reduce your sugar, reduce your starch, you can start off with something really simple and doable. Take the change that you want to do and shrink it right down to something really little. Add because this is such a powerful strategy, we've got something really doable, really shrunk down. I'm all ready to go, all ready for you. It is a seven-day sugar-free reset. It's totally doable. It's just seven days. And in this seven days, Dr. Lucy and I, we are there doing it with you step-by-step It's designed to really easily fit into your life and it's something that you can do. Like your brain is unlikely to balk at the idea of doing something for just seven days and it's also just $7. So another reason why your brain wouldn't balk at this fabulous doable 
reset. Absolutely. And it's, look, it's interesting because, you know, our brains, as we talk about, they do, they love to go into the, ah, uh, this is too hard story. And here you go, you know what, brain, how about we give it a go? How about we do an experiment? And even within that seven days, like we, we're not literally holding your hand because otherwise I'd have to drive to your house, but we are in there because there are people that go, oh, what if I don't do seven days? Then I can't even do that tiny change. And then this is the story that you can talk to yourself about. Something is better than nothing. So we've been conditioned to have this all or nothing phrase. So your brain goes all or nothing. No, I can't do that seven days because, you know, I've got a morning tea on at work and what if I bugger it up? And so, again, this is where we go, well, two things. One, you might not bugger it up if that's the word that you want to use. Or two, even if you do, it's still six days and 23 hours and 30 minutes where you have been able to let go of sugar. Yeah, absolutely. And just starting, just starting is the most powerful thing you could do. If you're standing up there staring at that rung way up there, trying to jump for it, knowing that you'll never reach it, that's no good. A tidy little, just take that first little step. Even if you take eight steps up a little ladder and you take two steps down, it doesn't matter. You're still six steps up higher than you were before. Absolutely. Absolutely. And part of the reason we've chosen seven days is two reasons. One, it's doable. It is easy. Your brain will go, okay, yes, I can do seven days. The second thing is that powerful things happen over those seven days. You will find that you get your energy, that instead of, you know, feeling exhausted all day, and particularly, I mean, who of you gets that after lunch slump? which again, marketing know you get that. So that's why they're advertising to you. But after seven days, you won't have that. Like I used to have this afternoon fatigue where honestly, I'd be in my clinic. And if you've ever been, I mean, of course, you've been in a doctor's room, the examination couch is not particularly <laughs> a comfortable looking bed. But to me, by the time that 2.30 came and I was tired, that bed was looking like some amazing cloud bed of recovery <laughs> and I would almost be, you know what, you know, just shutting my door, putting the lock and just dreaming of having a beautiful snooze on it. And now I never get that. I never, ever, never get it. I could, to me that's the miracle in, in, a, in itself that I never get that afternoon slump. It's because your little mitochondria are oxidizing those fatty acids you're a fat burner which is a beautiful thing to be not only is it great for your energy it's also great for your health so yeah seven days can be that first step to getting your body to be a fat burner for increased energy increased vitality and it's just a much smoother day absolutely and that's what we all want, a smoother day, a smoother <laughs> day with plenty of energy so that we can ride life's bumps because we can't always control the bumps, but we can control how we ride them. So gorgeous people, if you would like to join us for this really powerful seven-day sugar-free reset, check out the link below. Lucy and I do, uh, we do three live masterclasses. They're live Q&As. We can ask us questions. We've got a wonderful supportive Facebook group, which we'll also go into each day to answer your questions. We've got a wonderful guided medical hypnosis, a beautiful supportive community, like everything you need to take that first step to becoming a fat burner and having that fabulous energy. So check out the link below. And do you know what else I'm just going to add in? Don't forget 60 sugar-free recipes. Of course, a fabulous sugar-free mm. recipe. So when your brain goes, but I can't give up my cake, you don't have to. No, you don't have to give up your cake. You definitely don't have to give up your coffee. <laughs> and we've got a, like a family-friendly version and um, you can still also have your wine and treats if you want to as well. You absolutely can. We've designed it so that it's extremely 
doable. It kicks off August 26th. Check out the link below and we would absolutely love to see you in there. Thousands. We've had thousands of people. I mean, I'm sort of blown away by this, but we have had thousands of people from all over the world doing the sugar-free reset. We've had various names for it, but this is a, we're pretty happy with this one, the seven-day sugar-free reset. The link, all the Ws, rlmedicine.com forward slash no sugar, all little letters, seven bucks. Like seriously, it's the best seven bucks you'll ever spend. And I am super looking forward to seeing you in the reset. All right, lovely listeners, we will talk to you next week. Have a beautiful, beautiful week. Bye for now. See ya. So, my lovely listeners, that ends this episode of Real Health and Weight Loss. I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. And I'm Dr. Mary Barson. We're from Real Life Medicine. To contact us, please visit rlmedicine.com. And until next time, thanks thanks for for listening. listening. The information shared on the Real Health and Weight Loss podcast, including show notes and links, provides general information only. It is not a substitute, nor is it intended to provide individualized medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor can it be construed as such. Please consult your doctor for any medical concerns.